Frosty Fire 10 here, and I'm just going to do a quick leveling guide. 1, 2, 99. Well, you know, there's going to be a bit of... There's a lot of leeway. I think that's the, probably the best thing about Diablo 2, is you do have a lot of different ways to get to your destination when it comes to leveling and just playing through the game. And with the new Terror Zones, you can do... Oh, let's just... Yeah, so you got... I suppose we'll start here. This is probably a good place to start. Um, playing on your own, you can change the number of player count to eight and make it as hard as possible and then get most XP and makes it a real slog. Or you can just keep it low and just, you know, kill heaps of mobs. But you start out... You look for a good game. Oh, what's a good one? Driver calls cows in hell. Oof. Yeah, no, that's not bad. Let's, let's just, I'm just gonna, let's just go through the axe, one by one. So, alright, uh, that, uh, notice there, Corrupted Tremor Strike Glacial Trail. It's just a uh, terrorizer zone, but the terrorizer zones scale to your level, so that's ugh. but they don't scale um, when you're in normal, they don't scale up past uh, I think it's 40, 45 maybe, maybe something ridiculous like that. 45 might be, or maybe even 50. But uh, I know that since if I go there and I'm in hell, it won't scale. So, if, but if I go into nightmare, it scales up to, they're pretty high. So I was in one before, I was scaling at 71. So you can use that to level. Okay, so you start a new game, you go on your journey, bit of a walk, you know, typical, clear the den of evil. This is kind of like how I like to go through it. So you, I generally play through all uh, the first missions. So we start Den of Evil, uh, clear the Den of Evil, come back, eat skill, uh, go to Sister's Burial Grounds. I usually go, I don't come back to town straight away after doing Den of Evil because you want to get the waypoint in the Cold Plains. So if you want to be really detailed, it's like, you know, you, you go through, through the Den of Evil, get to the Cold Plains, then you teleport back to town, collect your skill point, then you go to the burial grounds so you can get your follower, which is the cross uh, bow girl. Just makes it easier. And the next thing you do is run a stony field. Oh, I don't, how detailed do I want to be? So you go to stony field, you know, you go to the underground passage, get to the dark wood. Over the dark wood, go to the tree. Get your scroll, go back to town, talk to Akara, back to Stonyfield, uh, go to Tristram, rec uh, rescue Kane, back to Darkwood. Uh, you can go to the Black Marsh and do the Forgotten Tower. Don't do it with other people. That's my recommendation for this particular quest. Uh, it drops runes if you're playing an expansion, not in classic, of course. So the it drops its best runes the first time you do it. Generally, I mean, you can still you know do it again and again, and if you do it a million times, maybe you'll get better stuff. But generally, the first time you do it, you get the best rewards, and that's the same for all the bosses. So. I'd advise you don't go in the Forgotten Tower with a group of seven other people and just waste it. So you'll also see uh, when you get to Nightmare and Hell that they'll, the person, that, if someone is helping you get through it, out of the kindness of their heart, they'll, also, they'll, they'll, they'll mysteriously walk into the, the Forgotten Tower and they'll want you to go with them. And you, you oh no, you're in Nightmare, say, say you're in Nightmare. And you're like, you're low level for night nightmare, maybe you're level 36 or 35 or something. You'd be like, oh, okay. You know, they're leading the way, I'll, I'll go with them. And then 
they get all your bloody runes. <laughs> and you can get some good ones in Nightmare. So, it is a good, it's a really good way to get mid-level runes. And then later on in Hell, to get high level, well, not, not the peak, but, you know, mid, mid to upper level runes from Black Marsh. Uh, Alright, so the next thing you do, you run through, you go through the Tomoe Highlands, go to the Outer Cloister, and you're in the big castle. Well, sanctuary. I mean, you know, religious institution. Oh, I didn't get lucky. Is that any good? Oh, I don't even have skillers. So, yeah, if you're looking at my setup, uh, oh, I suppose I'll, I'll mention it because, you know, maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. Uh, the, your challenge as you progress through the game early on is just moving through. You don't have to do, um, uh, again, you don't have to worry about the tools of the trade. You can come back and do that later to get the imbue from Chelsea. Um, save it. Don't use the imbue. Ever. <laughs> don't waste it. You um, All you're going to imbue... Uh, come on, Gade. Oh, I can read. There's a button for refreshing in there. So all you're going to uh, imbue, if you do want to know what to imbue, just go through the game, I suppose. Game guide or 1 to 99 guide? A bit of both, I suppose it is. Uh, oh, there it is. Damn it, I missed it. Uh, oh, I just skipped it again. Stop skipping it. <laughs> I might buy one just to waste my money. Uh, if you can find them, you'll be gambling, I suppose. Oh, that's a good armor. My armor is garbage, by the way, on this character. Uh, yeah, I saw it. There it is. So this is what you'll be gambling for. It's a, a coronet, so it changes into a circlet, unless it rolls the perfect coronet. It's a headpiece. It can roll like multiple skill, double or triple skill things. So that's that's an end game thing. Towards the end of the game, you'll be trying to get the perfect circlet. Unless you've got, you know, a nice tail rasher thing on a sorceress, you got the perfect set piece. But yeah, so that's what you'll be gambling on. And if you find circlets in the wild, you can imbue those and you can get skills on them. So that's can that can be really, really helpful. Uh, I haven't really got much on this character. On this save. But um, oh, I showed you a circlet with... What's a good one? These are just garbage. Uh, wonder skill stuff. Nothing special. And some just some typical crappy things. Oh, I haven't even got... Have I got one skiller? Oh, that's just terrible. Oh, well. Here's what it is. I played the game many, many years ago, and then again on console, and I have not matched my previous effort. But I've got some good rune stuff. So, okay, as you progress through the game, you get to Forgotten Tower, you get your first runes, and you start going, ooh, I want to get runes. How do you get runes? Just killing monsters. There's no magic find involved. As you play through the game, they'll drop. Killing more monsters quicker is a great way to get more runes. Uh, there's a nice place in Lower Karas, which is a good chance of getting runes. But, you know, as you progress, uh, as you get better armor, get better weapons, find a weapon you like, find a skill you like, and in this case, you know, I'll, for this Holy Freeze build, you're just pumping Holy Fire, and then you can respec, or you're, or you're just doing Resist Cold, and then you'll do Resist Sanctuary, I mean, Salvation when you level up, and Holy Freeze when you level up, and just plenty of zeal and sacrifice, and pump one point into Holy Shield, keep you alive. But yeah, so it's... So you progress through, go through the tower, it's beautiful tower. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it goes down, doesn't it? It's not really a tower. Sanctuary, religious institution. Okay, so you can use charge to go quicker if you have heaps of magic MP. I've got a lot just because of the items I'm wearing. 
So you get through, you beat Andario in the catacombs level two. I don't even have it. Is what it is. Uh, she uses poison. So the first boss, really tough if you're on your own and you don't have po decent poison resist. Um, so just, you can have reduced poison length as well. So, you know, it refreshes the time. I mean, you're not poisoned for as long. Oh, I'll just slowly go through my items so you can have a look at them. So this is, I mean, I'm missing a perfect skill, double skill paladin, two to paladin skills, three to offensive, three to offensive auras, amulet. And the same could be said for getting a perfect circlet with two to paladin skills, three to offensive aura. So again, there's a bit of room to grow. I've just got basic Oort Soul. That's really easy to get, Oort Soul. As you play through the game, you'll be collecting runes. You can only use them at a certain level, so that's like level 32. So, again, lots of the runes you don't have to worry about. I wouldn't bother using any of your early runes. Just save them. So, this is Spirit. Tal Thal Oort Am. So, this is a really good one. Everyone will recommend you get this as a beginner. Uh, I think you got to be level 30-odd. So, you know, towards Nightmare. Really, really helpful. Heaps of resists. Not much fire resist, but... Two to all skills. And this one's only 28% faster cast rate. So, again, doesn't matter so much on this build. But you can get up to, I think, 30 or more. Chance to block being 60%. And it's 150 defense because it's a beautiful sacred Taj. So that's Paladin, ex Paladin exclusive item. The specific shield. So that just that just helps a lot. Again, I could find a better one, and I will eventually, because Talthol or Am are runes that aren't too hard to find. Um, oh, I'll show you some. See, there's Thol. So it has cold resist and cold damage, and then oh look, there's a pull, an alum, and a foul. And I haven't got any Zods, unfortunately, because if I had a Zod, I'd put it on my main weapon. So I've just chucked an Eth on this, Zacharum's Hand. So this is only level 37. This is probably, I think this is almost best in slot. I mean, if you unless you've got like really high level stuff. If for a Holy Freeze Paladin, which is what I'm playing, it's really good. 6% chance to cast level 5 Blizzard. So you, oh, I could show you that on a high level area because low level guys won't survive long enough. Um, and it's got two to holy freeze, two to holy shock, so you can do switch to shock if you find cold immunes. And I haven't got a, a new charm, which is really good that uh, you can reduce enemy elemental resistances with the Sunder charm. So I haven't got one of those yet, but I'll get one of those, and then maybe this build will be even more powerful. Uh, but ignore target's defense, that's really important. So that's uh, as you swing. With dexterity, uh, you have attack rating, so that's your how well your attacks can hit. So my chance to hit, you know, the low level things in normal is 95%. But as you got the difficulties, the chance to hit enemies decreases because their level goes up and their defense goes up. So that's what your defense does. Reduces the chance that they'll hit you, and also your dexterity boosts your chance to block. So. It's kind of important to have in mind, but you really just pump strength so you can equip better armor. As you level up early, plenty of vitality. Always, I mean, life is really, 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 it's just great. Can't go wrong with life. But you'll need plenty of strength so you can equip your armors. So this is just trash armor for later on, but I can get much better. Uh, my mercenary... He's got one 753, and that's also trash, but it's better than my trash. I just want the mercenary to not die, because uh, they really annoy me when they do die. I'm just showing you some... This is mid-game stuff. Most of my armor... I, um, most of my items are mid-game, but some of them are best in slot. So getting a level 16 meditation aura, that's fine. You can get better. It's a 35% fast crash rate, which is just <laughs> silly. Uh, but it's good insight. It adds Meditation Aura, so that recovers mana, which again, isn't a big deal on this build, but 
it's good because before I get the infinity, which is the next item in this, what I'm going to get the mercenary, I can pass this around my various characters. And also the damage is pretty good, 114 to 246 on a nice Grim Scythe. And Grim Scythe's, Scythe's are good because they have fast attack speed. I've just got the uh, dexterity on there because he couldn't equip it. Because not high enough level. Just a bit, a bit annoying. Uh, I've got Venom Grip. Um, so chance of crushing blow. Again, I've got, is it a chance of crushing blow on that one? No, minus target defense. Yeah, yeah I'm going very fast. Because I don't want to make too long. But again, it is what it is. Uh, and Life Steal. Life Steal is good for, again, a melee character. And it's got, I've got Poison Resist on there. So I've got a Raven Frost for the Cannot Be Frozen. And Cold Absorb 20%. And it gives me some Dexterity, which is good. And adds some Cold Damage and some Attack Rating. It's not perfect Attack Rating, but it's nice. And I've got a Blade Buckle just for some Strength Dexterity. A hit recovery is good, so when you take a hit, you can, you know, hit back. I might, I'll switch that out when I get a better, a death. Oh, what's it called? Death Sand or the other one, if I need it. But I've got the, no, no chance to be frozen there, so. And I've got a Carrying Wind on, which is, again, this is not, this is not best in slot, but it does give me life steals and defense versus personnel. And 55 poison res, which, you know, I'm trying to get resistance as much as I can. And uh, the... 8% chance to cast level 13 Twister on striking, so that's pretty funny. And to do poison over when struck, which again is just funny. Some more res with uh, the the, the tear haunch, and it's two to Vigo, but I don't use it. And just get some good faster wrong walk. So that's probably the first thing that the people will tell you is you want boots with run walk that's faster because you're gonna be doing a lot of running. <laughs> it's kind of the game. So you run and run and run. You played through the, the first area, whatever build you did. You probably level 12, 13, 14 if you took your time, 15 maybe if you really took your time. Oh, that's the other thing. I have to repair this a lot. So that's why I want Zod because it makes your weapon indestructible. Saves you a bit of time. Hello. So you arrive at Luke Galane, level 15, level 14, 13. The first thing you do Go over here. This way, have you. you hire a mercenary. Now, I'm not going to hire one because that would be really annoying to lose all my gear. But it does warn you, so. Uh, some of the good ones, Defiance. So, Defiance is good. You get Defense. Uh, prayer is good. You get Healing, Blessed Aim. Yeah, that's okay. Depends on your build. And then you go down the sewer. And you do the Radiment quest line down to level 3, kill Radiment. You get two skill points for that, so that's really good to do. And there's some good stuff you can buy from Farah. She does sell good armor, so you can buy, you know, something with 70 or 90 or 100. You do want some uh, fire resist, poison resist when you go down to the sewers, because they can be some archers who shoot fire and they can be really annoying. Then you get. The Heradric Scroll. And then you're out in the desert. Oh look, there's the Twisters. I was able to summon them. Ooh, an amulet. I got no scrolls. Uh, collect all the small uh, charms you find. Uh, if you get any with resistances on them. Oh, that's not too much. But any resistance charms, keep them. Especially if they're small. Use them. Put, them. put them all on. Get as many as you can. I haven't got nearly enough. And then again, I could have some skillers, but I could just focus on melee damage. Uh, be careful. Where are the beetles? The beetles in there. If you don't have good lightning resistance, the beetles can really rip you to shreds. In this area. And all throughout Act 2. So that can be really annoying. So just be aware. Lightning res, lightning res, lightning res. Oh, maybe that you want. I could sell that. Uh, pump your vitality, strength. Don't get too worried about getting to level 18. Because 
it can take you a little while. You may need level 16 once you exit the sewers. How may I help you? you just gotta, you know, grit your teeth. Greetings. I mean, that it's one of those things where you're just like, I just want to get to level 18 so I can use that awesome skill. And yeah, what, it's totally understandable. <laughs> Lots of the good skills are level 18. Our hammers and different sorcery things. So you go to the dry hills, go to the halls of the dead, get your cube. You must get your cube. You don't have to do it though right away. You can actually skip halls of the dead if someone else grabs the cube and they're going to make the staff. You know, if you're in a rush. It's not a big deal. So you can, when you beat uh, the Travancore, do they drop the cube? And then the summer, yeah, yeah the traffic drops the cube, don't they? If you don't do it there, but it's, you're better off getting it. So once you get the cube, put it in your inventory. Uh, what have I got in there? I've just got a dark low. Because it looks nice. I was going to do something with it, but I've forgotten. Uh, put it in your inventory uh, with your Tomb of Town portal and your Tomb of Identity, which you would have bought in Act 1, just because they're convenient. And then whenever you pick up items, you can put chuck them straight in there if you're on PC. On console, I think we still can't do that. Oh, let's see if I... Yeah. Alright. Can I... No, I can't do that. Okay. So console still has the limit. I think there's an option in... this. There's an option that you can do it straight to the cube. I think there's something... I think you can. But I'm just not 100% on it. So you get the cube. Next you're off to Far Oasis. So you got to build the staff. you got to get the two pieces. And as you're leveling up, maybe you're, level, maybe you're only level 16, 17. You're like right there. You're almost to level 18. So you find the maggot's lair. Now let's see if I can find the maggot's lair quickly. That would be really convenient. Uh, no, not there. Do, 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 do. Again, you've got lots of uh, flying uh, vultures and some bugs that shoot poison, so you got to watch out for poison. Then you got lots and lots of beetles. Smash the beetles! Smash them! Yep, Game of Thrones reference. Oh, there. Yeah, there's a beetle burst. Uh, that's one of the little mini boss dudes. So here's the maggot's lair. Now, uh, before you go in the maggot's lair, make sure you find the waypoint for Far Oasis. I've, you know, seen this happen many times. People, they're in the maggot lair, and then they go to level 2, and then level 3, and then it's, you know, it's a pain in the ass. to run all the way back and then exit the maggot's lair and then, you know, you're back in Fire Oasis rather than being dry hills having to run the whole way. So, Maggot's Lair, it can be really dangerous, if especially if you're playing with other people. And if they're sorceresses or necromancers, and they think they need to go first. And say so you're playing melee, you're playing, say so you're almost at your Holy Freeze, and you're using Holy Fire. You gotta make sure you go in first if you're melee. Get in first, because it's narrow, you can't get past the other people. Everyone's blocking each other's way. So you're stuck, you're pushing up against things, you can't get through. And then all of a sudden, the sorceress in front of you is stuck, they panic, they try and turn around, they're trying to run back, but they can't run back. You're in the way, but you can't hit the enemies because you're melee. You can't reach them. It's, I mean, it, it, it's still the same in Nightmare in Hell. When you build, someone has to go and get the staff pieces. Except there'll be a sorceress who'll teleport. Again, not that you're not immune to damage when you teleport, but it can help. I mean, if you if you know what you're doing, I'm sure you you know you're fine. But for the average Joe, they can still get themselves in trouble. So you run through, get stuck on things, you die a lot. Make sure you to put your portals down. And uh, you get through. Oh, I'm having a dream run here. 
Do, do, do. I'm walking through this one because lots of people struggle with this because the body blocking, which is something that lots of other games don't like and they've made an effort to get rid of. So where your characters are blocked by other characters, it's so noticeable here. This is where really, I think Act 2 themed in general is body blocking. Because it's not so annoying in the other acts. Except on the staircases in Act 4. But that's, that's not a big deal. But yeah, generally, all the annoying body blocking instances are in Act 2. We have to learn to, I'll go first. And, you know, I oh, know you go first, and then oh no, you go first, and then oh no, I gotta get, oh no, I shouldn't be in front of you. And then there's a little bit of a lag, and then suddenly they've jumped over you. And you're like, how did that happen? I was trying to do the right thing. And, oh, that wasn't it. Run back this way. Go. Okay, here we go. So you get through level three. Now, one of the things that's good is the chest stands out. Just in, so you can spot it. Uh, do, do, do. This is why I like having a huge amount of mana from having the spirit shield. Because you can just hold charge. And that's your that's the paladin's best movement. And also you can use it as an attacking. You know, it has its all whole possibilities there. And you got your smite. Uh, on your tree. You would just you be if you're playing Holy Freeze, you'd be at Holy Freeze pretty much in Maggot's Lair, you should get to Holy Freeze. If you're playing through slowly. And then you you know, your zeal is whatever it is. I'm not too you know, don't worry too much about that. Uh, you don't need to do these ones yet. You can save the one, two, three, four, five skill points until later. And then maybe, you know, if you want to get Holy Shield, it's just that it boosts your defense. Any chance to block, so that's that can be really helpful from a defensive point of view. But if you want to be full attacking, don't worry about it. Uh, and these ones are only been uh, granted by an item. So did I get the fights? Oh, whatever. All right. See there, the chest has a little symbol on it, so you can use that to find it. Let's smack that, and then it'll drop the staff. Uh, be careful of the poison from this, bo this boss. It takes a really, really long time to come off. So you're better off just teleporting back to town. You, you will find your mercenary might die if they get poisoned. So you got to be really quick to get back to, to Farah to get healed. Because it can be expensive. Every time a mercenary dies, as they level up, they become way more expensive to res resurrect or revive. So this level 71... 35,000? 36,000? Gold every single time he dies. And then if you, you know, if I went into hell, I'm too, too low level for hell to be comfortable in hell. And I probably need more resistances. So it's kind of like, if I go there, the mercenary is going to die again and again and again. And I could lose all my money just buying the stupid mercenary. So one of the things you can do, if you think you're going to die a lot, Take your money, put it in your shared tabs. No, I'm not going to do that because, again, I'm, I'm okay. But yeah, so put the majority of your money in shared tabs. And this can be really helpful if you're playing a sorceress or any sort of glass cannon type build where you don't have the defensive properties just yet in the early game to protect you. Really, really helpful to put the money in the shared tab so you don't lose it when you die. Because you lose a lot. Oh, okay, Sanctuary. So let's have a look. So see, look, it goes to 45. Okay, so that's the max cap on the Terrorizer Zone. So this is a Terrorizer Zone, just to familiarize you with it. You won't be able to do Terrorizer Zones unless you're in a game someone else has already gone through the act. So like they're in Nightmare and they're coming back to normal for whatever reason. Like doing cow level, then you can do... Actually, you don't even see the terrorizer thing until you... No, 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 okay. So you have to beat 
uh, Bale, Act mm. 5, or in Classic, I don't know if Classic even has Terra Resonance. That's a good point. But yeah, for expansion, you beat Bale, and then you're in Nightmare, and then when you come back to normal, you can do Terrorizer Zones up to level 45, so it's a really good idea to level up. Again, this will be, because they've been introduced, a lot of the leveling has become a little bit more simple, a bit easier to explain, apart from the natural progression through the game. Oh, I'm in the wrong area. Carrying on. Carrying on and on. Okay, so... You got the staff from Maggot Lair, you escape that hell, you're level 18, maybe 19, can depend. So you're starting to get your good abilities. Then you go to Lost City. Uh, there's lots of undead in Lost City, and also these tall dudes who rage themselves. So they're not too annoying, but I think there's still beetles. Are there still beetles in Lost City? No, we had the vipers start spawning, don't we? So there's a viper temple. Um, let me just... Oh, and you get these annoying Marauder things. And the Marauder and the Cat people. Plague Bearers? Alright, I'm just thinking, do I have Claw? Okay. So you make your way to Lost City, you're looking for the Claw Viper Temple. So, you, recommendation is you go around the outsides. As you do, Mark, you know, exploring any terrain. Uh, so you get to the Claw Viper, the Viper Temple, and the enemies in there are the snakes, and they can be really dangerous because they do charge. So they're able to do the charge attack, and it hits and stuns you, and they can sort of stun lock you if they get a good go at you. Some of the boss ones can be quite tricky. So be careful in there. Uh, physical defense, Some sometimes if they have a cold element, that can be annoying. But yeah, they can be quite challenging, especially on your own, so, and even with others. And then in Nightmare and Hell, again, they can be really, really dangerous. So you don't want to let them overwhelm you. So, slowing them down, inhibiting their movement, you know, making sure they don't get that charge off. Come on, yes, there we go. So the salamanders, and then they change their names, but they're still essentially the same as you go through. Um, oh, I was gonna, that's just a Cathan's ring. So lots of the set items, that, which are green items, and you have yellow, which is rare. And then you have just uh, sort of the gray uh, socketed items, and then blue magic, uh, and then the orangey goldy, the gold unique. Again, you always pick up the rare things, but then you don't need them. So, like a broad axe, people aren't going to pick that up. There's not a lot of two-handed melee builds that involve broad axes. So, it's kind of... There's lots of items on the ground that people will all rush over to as you're playing through the game. Something to be aware of if you... Because there is shared loot. So, everyone's trying to get all the same loot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean by shot. Oh, just... Look, a rune. So runes glow orange. Everyone will try and pick up the runes. They will be hotly contested. So as you're playing through with lots of people, they'll drop and then people will just charge at them. Uh, so good luck. <laughs> this is where if you're on PC, you know, it's a whole different ball game. Because you can use telekinesis and pick them up. You can use telekinesis in this, but it's just slightly more convoluted. Hello. And, you know, it's not the first instinct. So it's Kathan's ring. So set items, uh, the green mark means I've got Kathan's seal. So once you get all of them, you get bonuses for the multitude of them together. So I can... Kathan's isn't very good, so I don't really want to keep it. Um, what's a good one? Sanders is, is a mid one. So level 25. When you put multiple on, they have special effects. It's like I don't. Want, yeah, okay, I'll just show you. Okay, so when you have multiple on, you get see that gold plus fifty defense. So you, the bonuses improve. 
the more items you have of a whole set. And say the best set in the game, you tell Rasha for the sorceress. I mean, that's the that's a mid level one, the Huanan. Huanan. So they can do stuff too. So that some of the set stuff's really good. Late game, I mean, especially tell Rasha for Blizzard sorceress. Or, that's just a no brainer, absolute no brainer. All right, so you got to Claw Viper Temple. You managed to get through the snakes. You, you built the staff. Once you build the staff, this is going to be a little bit annoying. You talk to Deckard Kane. He says, good job building the staff. Where do we go with the staff? You talk to Drognan. Confirm you finished the snake quest. You don't have to talk to Drognan, but, you know, you should. Because he's all about the snakes and the sun going eclipsing. As it does when you enter the Lost City. Talk to Jaren. Sometimes Jaren gets locked to here in the palace, and the guard Welcome doesn't the recognize that you're allowed in now. So you can, you might have to exit and then come back. So that does happen. That still happens. I had it happen earlier to me. <laughs> it's it's still a thing. For all those who want to know, yes, you can still get hit Jaren stuck here and you can't talk to him. He's like, Ugh, and you can't talk and you can't get in. Once you're in, uh, this is probably a really simple thing, just an easy route. Go down into the harem. Uh, this is the resurrected version, so they've cleaned up the harem. In the original, it had a lot more corpses on the ground. Uh, a lot more um, female corpses on the ground, because it's a harem. Stick to the left. Oh, yep, stick to the left again. Oh, God, not that left. Okay, there we go. Uh, there are mages in here that shoot elements. They're annoying. Not a big deal. Okay, and then bam. So you're level 20, maybe 21. Maybe, maybe still 19. Or maybe you're still 17 if you've been going pretty quick. Oh, where am I going? Oh, got myself lost. Okay, stick to the left. Back we go, back we go. Stick to the side. And then you just rush through. Uh, poison guys are in level 2. Level 3, so you can fly through these. Now this one you go to the middle. There'll be a few enemies around here, be careful. There'll be a boss, it's always the same boss in normal, and he's, you know, much stronger and there's multiple in Nightmare in Hell. You get to the portal, activate the portal, and you're in Arcane Sanctuary. Now, once you talk to Jaren at the palace, if someone else has the waypoint, Arcane Sanctuary, you can go in their portal, but if you haven't, you know, talked to him, and have access to the palace, you can't access the portal. So that can be quite annoying for people when they try and rush through. So just be aware of that. Uh, once you're here, uh, you pick an end, there's, you pick a direction. One of the four will have a summoner who can be, he can be dangerous because he shoots the frost blast thing and he can, uh, he can frost spike. He could freeze you. But he has really weak defense, so once you get close to him, you can just absolutely wreck him. So it's not too much to worry about. It's a bit of annoying. So this again, what I was describing earlier, you can get blocked by other people. So if other people, they don't move, you gotta get past them. These passageways are not nearly as wide as the image portrays them to be. It is, um, it is simply not the case that they are it's quite hard to walk past people. Everything is narrower. And the actual... Say, here with the stairs... You may think it's actually curved, but it's kind of like... Layered... Layered squares. In a diamond... Diamonds, yeah. Layered diamonds. So you can't overtake people on stairs. So... When you go to... See, this one here, with the stupid stairs... <sighs> can be quite annoying. 
So again, Melee's first, Sorceress is second, Necromancer's third. <laughs> Work it out. A lot of annoying things happen. People get stuck, they go too far forward, they get killed because they don't want to be the one in front. They want to lead the way. Say you survived all that. You're level 20, maybe, maybe you're still level 18, 19, 20. Again, there's so much variability in Diablo. I mean, you can get through the whole first act one to act to act one to five and still be level one. Someone can carry you. You get to the Canyon of the Magi. So this is a great place to farm levels if you're, you know, probably 17 to 23, maybe 24. And then you stop getting much XP and it's not worth it. Oh, that's fine. So each of these tombs, only one of them has the boss. And you'll know which one it is because on the quest, you look at the book next to the summoner, it'll tell you. Oh. Yep. So you'll, it'll tell you which one it is, which of the seven tombs. And you go in the tomb, find Duriel, and... I'd say Duriel's a really challenging boss. And dis especially depending on your... If you were... <laughs> if you're doing a Holy Freeze Paladin... Like I've done with this character... This boss can be really challenging because you're... He has Holy Freeze! So... He has Holy Freeze too! And yours does slow him down. So, it's not that yours doesn't affect him, it's just that you don't get the cold damage bonus because he's resistant to most cold damage. Because he's a cold boss. You can tell it's not the right tomb if it has the chest in it. So, if you go in a tomb and then, you know, you didn't check or you're playing with other people, you know it's not that one if there's a chest. But it's just a good place to farm XP. Even after you beat Duriel. But just for... Maybe you want to put on Holy Fire or... Just something different. You don't want to rely on the cold. You just, you know... If you're on your own, it can be incredibly difficult battle. So... Don't be afraid to just... Farm the other Tarash's tombs and level up a bit more. Get a bit more secure. Get some maybe some better gear. Get some cold res. You need some cold resistance. If you can get the... Cannot be frozen. There's a couple of low level items that can do it. Uh, it's a death hand set. Death hand? Death? Death touch? Oh god. So yeah. Uh, blizzard sorceresses. Or frozen orb sorceresses. So sorceress using ice can struggle with Duriel as well. So it is what it is. He's just resistant to it. So it's better off being in a big group, having a mix of players, maybe a fire sorceress or a necromancer. Just even though necromancers tend to get wrecked by Duriel at low level because their skeletons can't survive getting holy freeze and they just get torn to shreds. Maybe the mages will survive and do some damage. So this is probably, a, this might be the cutoff point. People may get stuck on this boss and quit the game. I mean, it's, yeah. They may do that. So, to you. if you get to this point and you can't beat Duriel on your own and you're just playing on your own, or you're even playing just on PC and you're on, um, oh, can you play? You can't play a resurrected HTTP and H, oh, on the private server things. Oh, on the PC one where you can just mod it like crazy. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Just thinking, if you if you're really stuck, playing on your own is tough. I've played through the game on my own many times, and before on console, this game was fixed, so you actually could play with other people properly, like you can now, which you couldn't do before. It's a bloody tough. Especially when you you just holy freeze and then you just put on your resist cold and hope that you can not get frozen. 
So I wish you good luck with this Duriel battle, because it can be quite challenging. Okay, once you get through it, uh, talk to Deckard Kane. he congratulates you, says, oh no, we've still, still got stuff to do, blah, 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 it's all terrible. Talk to Jaren, talk to Mashif. So again, this is another annoying one. Find Mashif here. Sail east. So now you're in Karas Docks. You're in the third act. Now the only difference between normal and nightmare is again, you, you lose resistances. The bosses, all the monsters are tougher. There's more mini bosses. But it's not too drastic. So again, you're playing through the same, basic same game again, just on a higher difficulty. So that's why this sort of me guiding you through it should be helpful because you'll be doing it multiple times with multiple different characters um, I'm not going to talk about the NPCs too much o almost as you go for potions the repair ladies over here she's, she starts off at the entrance she'll say hello it's her ulti and she repairs she's got some good armor maybe depends don't worry too much about it if you've got you know 80, 90 armor at this point, you'll be fine for a while. Or even less than that. If you're with a group of people, they'll be able to cover for you. Generally. Unless you're melee, then you do want to pay more attention to your armor. Just common sense stuff like that. And I want to tell Akinesis. There you go. Okay, that's good. Let's go. So, Act 3. There's a lot of stuff you can do later. Uh, there's collecting Lamesson's tomb. You can do that later on your own. You don't need to do that with the group. Uh, the Gibeon Flare, the Golden Bird. These are ones that just happen naturally. A little mini boss will drop them. Or the Gibeon Flare, you've got to go into the Flare Jungle and then find it. So, again, not a huge deal. You work that out if you want to. Or you just focus mainly on Callum's will. So building another weapon, like in Act 2. So you got to get the eyes from the spider forest. you got to find the spider cabin. And collect it from a chest. And then you got to go to... Ignore the Great Marsh. You don't need to worry about that. Go straight to the Flared Jungle. So traversing through this area, you're just going to be assaulted by these little dudes. And they they can be annoying because they do they are quick they are they have ranged. It's it can be, I mean if you're playing as the Holy Freeze you can, you know you negate a bit of their mobility because you slow them, which is the whole point of the Holy Freeze. That and doing good damage as well later on. So that's the poison over the proct. So you're gonna get you're gonna be annoyed by running across. Am I on the right side? Is where I, you know, am I going the right direction? Getting lost in the forest. Hitting dead ends. So the group may split up if you're with a group of people and they may think, oh, that guy doesn't know where he's going. Oh, look, a dead end. If you're a sorceress, you can teleport across. Everyone else doesn't have the luxury. Uh, barbarian can leap across. So that's what, that can be quite helpful. helpful. All right, but you're just going to have to work your way through it. Uh, one of the things I will mention, since I'm I'm running out of time on the video because I don't want to make it more than an hour. So it's like, don't want to go too nuts, but I think I'll preface it. Yeah, yeah. In hell, when you get to the third difficulty in your, you know, level 70 to 90, or level 60 to 90, depending on, you know, how you're going, to 99. Uh, Flare Jungle Great Marsh can be incredibly hard to get through. I can't find it. I wish we could find one of the damn enemies I'm looking for. Oh look, there's the Gideon Flare. So you can do that. So there's an enemy 
called a oh, doom shroud, evolved form of a doom shroud. So where's a good doom shroud? Sometimes the rewards thing keep gloom shroud. Okay, yeah, I can't find any. Oh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Let's go back. So you got through, um, so in, go back to the jungle. In hell, there's a lot of enemies that become incredibly painful, but there's two in particular that you have to watch out for. So the Gloom Shroud evolved form is a ghost. It's transparent. You can't see it. Shoots lightning. Even with max light resist, lightning resist, you can still get abs get absolutely obliterated in hell. It is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It is awful. So in hell, it can be very challenging to get through Act Three, unless someone's really carrying you through and they're high, really high level. But yeah, even really high level players can die quite easily. So you just just be aware this is a not nice place later in the game. So you progress through. You get the two parts. You go into the flare dungeon. You find this nice lower crust. This nice city. Little town. Oh, I think I have some portals. Uh, lots of magic wielding enemies. Um, shooting blizzard. There's some... Some pretty easy ones. Some big tree dudes. They can be annoying because they can stun you. Some bugs. Again, nothing too special. If you're holy freezing, you'll be level 24. Probably 23, 24. When you're here, or maybe even if you've taken the slow route, you may be 25, 26. So you'll be quite capable of dealing with them. Uh, in Crust, the Crust Bazaar, you go to the sewer to get the next piece. So you gotta go down in the sewer. Can be a bit of a maze down there. So just take your time. Or if you're with a big group, they'll find the way down to the next area. Uh, there's no major boss down there, so nothing to worry about there. There is a little mini boss in the flare dungeon, but they're just uh, those little dudes, the shaman ones breathing fire. So again, fire resist can be quite helpful there. Spider forest, there's, there's some spiders in the spider in the cavern, so yeah, that poison resist. Um, so you go through the sewers, get the other piece, go to the upper crust, don't worry about the side mission, you can do it later. Get to the travancore, sometimes when you, as soon as you get into act three, people will do a portal to travancore, just because they like to do that. Uh, these enemies can be quite difficult because they summon hydras and hydras can just spam fire things at you and so fire resist again can be quite helpful uh, torch fist talk ice fist he can be quite challenging he's you know ice nova thing once he dies can kill a lot of people let's grab that and I'll grab that as you're playing through the game Always collect gems and runes and jewels as well. So you may wonder why I collect jewels, but they can actually be used in crafting. Really good stuff later in the game, like right at the end game. You can make some really, really good stuff if you know what you're doing. And again, with a bit of luck. So again, that's kind of like gambling. But there's some really, really good items you can make. You get the flail from killing the Travancore Council. And then you smash, push the pieces together in your cube, merge the pieces. If you don't have the cube, the cube will drop here. Then you open the Durance of Hate. Oh, how much time I got? Oh, not long at all. Okay, so you go through Durance of Hate. Uh, be aware of the poison dudes. There's the big guys. There's one really, 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 really dangerous enemy. And they remain dangerous through normal and hell. Oh, perfect. How did I do that? Uh, Mephisto boss. Again, I don't have any... I think I'm out of portals. Oh, I've got one left. 
So there's a little Stygian doll. Little doll. Little tiny dudes who run around here, and when they die, they explode. And when they die and explode, you die. So be very careful. Uh, them and the evolved Doom Shroud, Gloom Shroud, can be the, you know, they're two of the most challenging. There he is. These little Stygian little dolls. Whenever they die, they hurt you. And they can insta-kill you later on. They can be incredibly dangerous. And they're so quick and they're so small and so fast, they just bam, on you. You're dead. Even for Holy Freeze, they can get past it. They can get pretty close to you. So, take your time. Don't rush through there. Don't rush through the units of hate. Unless you want some pain. Uh, Mephisto boss, he uses poison and electricity. So, you stick close to him. Plenty of heals and you'll be fine. The, there's some more council members on either side with their flame hydras. And the flame hydras can kill a lot of people. So, fire resist, fire resist, fire resist. You get through. You're in Act 4. All right, I might end it here and then do a part two. That's my time. All right, I'll do a part two. Cause I don't really want to. I don't want to, you know, rush it too much. Be a bit unfair. What's that charm that I got? Cold resist. Beautiful. And meh. All resistances is good early on on amulets. Again, you just want to collect. As much defense as you can, as much resistance as... But don't, you know, defense over resistance in normal. And then in Nightmare, you want to get more resistances. So sometimes you may choose an item because it has more resist. Rather than one that has more defense. Just, you know... <laughs> try and find all these uniques. No, you just get a magic finding character. So you get a sorceress. A frozen old sorceress is great for magic finder or a blizzard source. And you just stack them with magic finding items, and then you just run them through uh, Nightmare Mephisto. And you can get heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff there. Or you can make into the Terrorizer zones. You can just rush them through Nightmare versions of those zones. Or you can do Hell uh, Tower in Act 1. Um, and then you can just Tower Cell, I think. So you can just run through that and get heaps of runes. Yeah, so Mephisto is really good. Act, the Act 3 boss for getting Magic Finder. Magic Finding. Doing lots of really good stuff from him. Uh, also, just playing the game normally, you'll find stuff. So, again, don't sweat it. Uh, yellow rare items should be fine for a long time. And you can always get new ones and replace them. So, sometimes it's better to get items that you know you can replace. Because then you're just like, oh, okay, I got a new thing. You don't get so attached to them. So, some of the uniques people get really attached to. I was going to mention about the jewels before it ends this part. Uh, yeah, so the jewels are important crafting parts. So again, I prefer rubies because you can make uh, caster type uh, equipment with certain types of gloves. And it's a whole other thing. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Okay, so this has been part one. Oh, really just a... I try to be... Yeah, so this is just a guide through the axe. Okay, okay. And at this point, if you once you're Act Four, you should be level 20, 27, maybe, maybe twenty, maybe only twenty five, twenty six. Depends on how again how you play. So you may be twenty nine, close to thirty, or you may be at thirty if you took a time. So you may have your ultimate ability. So you know you might be trying to do. Fist of the Heavens. You may have just unlocked Fist of the Heavens or your hammers will be really powerful and hammered in. You should be tough, but the enemies are really tough in this area. So I'm going to go through them in a part two. So this has been part one. And me rushing through. So leveling and guide. Guide to the first three acts in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um... Yeah. Yeah. You guide to the first three acts. Because I'm trying to be detailed. Not too detailed, but, you know, here's what it is. All right. This has been Frosty510. Like and subscribe. And comment. If you've got any more, sort of, if you want me to go into more detail. I 
I think that's the point. All right, then. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> bye-bye. Uh, yeah, bye-bye.